Hi there, I'm Brandon from Basic Wisdom. Today we'll be breaking down an option spread strategy, which is an advanced option strategy that you could see primarily on the Series 7. You could also see questions on this on the Series 4 and Series 9. Both of those are FINRA exams that you might be preparing for. Now before we get started, just a quick plug for Achievable, which is the learning program that I helped craft and create and wrote all the learning materials for. In fact, you can find videos like this in our programs like the SIE, Series 7, and we just released a brand new Series 63 program. If you're interested in checking those programs out, click the links below and go look at our material. You can check it out for free without even using a credit card. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, today we're going to talk through what I refer to as uh, the spread system. Now, uh, this is a system that's been developed uh, over the years, and you can find similar types of systems to approach these types of questions uh, in other learning materials. And there are multiple ways to approach uh, questions on spreads, but I believe this is the best. And this is the way that I approach questions and consistently get them right. Now, the, the first thing that we need to establish is just what a spread is. A spread is whenever you're long a call and short a call simultaneously, that's a call spread, or when you're long a put and short a put simultaneously. So there are call spreads and put spreads. Now, it doesn't matter if there's a difference between the strike prices or expirations. In fact, you're always gonna see a difference between the two, but you're always dealing with a spread with your when you're long and short the same type of option being calls or puts. Here, we have a call spread in front of us. One of the more important things with spreads is understanding how to name a spread, which when we name a spread, what we're really doing is identifying the most important component of a spread. Anytime you're dealing with a spread, you're always going to see one leg uh, or one part of the spread being more important than the other. An easy way to determine what I call the dominant side of the spread is actually by identifying what side has the higher premium. Problem is, in a lot of questions you might see in the actual test, they're not gonna give you the premiums. They're gonna make it a little bit more difficult than that. But if, for example, the long call had a premium of nine and the short call had a premium of three, we know right away the long call is the dominant side of the spread and in, and in effect defines where we actually want the market to go, what the intention of the spread is, et cetera. But they don't give that to us here. Now, if they don't give us premiums, we have to rely on where the difference is in the spread other than the long and short. There, there will always see a long and short part of the spread. The difference here is between the strike prices. Now with calls, the lower the strike price on a call, the more valuable that call is. Now, now try to remove yourself from the long and short part of the strategy. Whenever you have a call, there's always going to be a buyer of that call and a seller of that call. And that buyer, whenever they buy an option, they're always going to gain a right to buy stock at that fixed strike price. If we look at the 50 call, the 50 call gives whoever buys that call the right to buy at 50. If we look at the 60 call, whoever bought that call has the right to buy stock at 60. So ask yourself, if we're just looking at what these contracts offer to the buyer, what sounds better to you? The right to buy at 50 or the right to buy at 60? The right to buy at 50 is always gonna be a more valuable option than an option that has a higher strike price, like 60. So what I'm trying to say here is that the 50 call is going to be a more valuable option. Therefore, we can assume it would have the higher premium between the two. Now, why is that important? Well, if we can identify what side of the option spread is more valuable than the other, then we can safely assume that that side would have the higher premium of the two. And here's your rule of thumb. With calls, the option that has the lower strike price is always the dominant side. With puts, the option that has the higher strike price is always the dominant side. Now we know we have a call spread here. And if we know that our 50 call is gonna be the dominant side because it has the lower strike price between the two and is just plainly the more valuable option, that will determine what the overall sentiment of the spread is, or basically what you know what the intention of, of establishing this, this spread is. So first and foremost, if the long side is the dominant side, then we refer to it as a long spread. Specifically, this is a long call spread. On, on that same note, a, a word association that I think is really helpful to make is the word long and the word debit. Those will always go together, okay? So this is also a debit call spread. Now, if you think about it, 
right? If you're buying the more expensive option, we know the 50 call is the more expensive of the two, and you're selling the less expensive one, you're gonna end up with a debit. Debit means more money's leaving your pocket than coming in, and that would happen here. Now last, long calls are bullish, therefore, this is a bull call spread. So the key to naming a spread is always identifying its most important side, and there will always be one side that's more important than the other. This case here, the long call is the more important side, therefore, we have a long call spread, also known as a debit call spread, also known as a bull call spread. Let's assign some premiums, and then let's talk a little bit about how you can make your way through a option spread question. Now, if you've been through enough practice questions, you've probably seen a number of maximum gain, maximum loss, break even type questions. And the goal of, of the next, let's say five to 10 minutes is really gonna be going through, how do we answer those questions? How do I get to the answer there the, the most efficiently and the easiest? Because I know these questions can be tough, right? Now, we'll get to the wide, narrow, exercise, expire, and the above, below question. I'll talk about what I mean down there. Uh, but first, we're going to cover maximum gain, maximum loss, break even. Now, if you've read through the achievable materials, you've already seen what I'm about to put up on the screen, which is a four-step system to getting to the right answer for maximum loss, maximum gain, break even. Now, now something to keep in mind, this four-step system only works with spreads. That's it. So don't try to use this on straddles, don't use this on hedging or income or any other strategy. I, I probably should have pointed this out up front, but one of the more important parts of options is being able to identify what strategy you're dealing with. And just so you know, there's, there's really five strategies that the exam tends to care about. There's your single leg options, which are, you know, I bought a call and that's all I did, or I sold a put and that's all I did. There's hedging, uh, that would be a long option with the stock. You got income, that's short option with the stock straddles and spreads those are your five okay so as long as you're really comfortable with each one of those five those are the primary option strategies they're going to bring up on the exam again it's really important to identify what a spread is that's longer call and shorter call simultaneously or longer put shorter put simultaneously and once you know that you're dealing with a spread if they ask maximum gain maximum loss or break even this is the system that i'd recommend that you use okay let's go through it now, step number one, we're gonna net out our premiums, meaning that we're gonna look at what we bought and what we sold, and we need to figure out what the overall amount of money that we're either making or spending when we first start this option strategy. Now here, we bought the option, uh, we bought the call for nine, and we sold the call for three. That is an overall debit of six per share, or $600 overall. Now, here's the good news about the system. If you're looking for maximum gain or maximum loss, you might answer that question with the very first step in the system. It might just be a one-step process. Now, if the very first thing that you figure out, if you end up with a net debit, that is your maximum loss, and that's what we have. We have a $6 debit or a $600 debit overall. So this is our maximum loss, 600 bucks. Now, if this was a net credit that we'd start out up front, that would be our maximum gain. We're gonna talk a little bit about the why behind these numbers and why the maximum loss is 600, but for right now, just trust the system. This will always get you to the right answer. Second step, we need to figure out what the distance, what the difference is between the two strike prices, which for us here is gonna be between 50 and 60. The difference is 10. That's it. Now the second step is the only step that doesn't tell you something, but it's important to get to the other answers. Now for step three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that net strike price, which are for us was 10, subtract out the original net premium, right? And try not to think about any either of these as like positive or negative numbers. We're just figuring out what is the difference between 10 and six, and that's four, right? Now whatever we get here, will answer whatever the other max is, meaning we figured out max loss with step one. Well, guess what? We're figuring out the maximum gain with step three. And that would be vice versa if we found the maximum gain up front. Step three would tell us what the maximum loss is. So bottom line, the maximum gain for us here is 400 bucks. Perfect. Now the last step, which is break even. We have to be aware of what type of spread we're dealing with because depending on whether it's a call spread or a put spread, we're gonna approach this differently. Now this is a call spread, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to our original net premium of six, very first thing that we found out here, and then we take that and add that 
to the low strike price. Some people use call up, put down for this. This would be call up. We're gonna count up from the low strike price, 56. Now here's a little um, piece of knowledge I think might help if you forget how to do this, this uh, part of the, the, the four step system. The break even will always be in between the two strike prices, always. It'll, in this case here, we never find a break even below 50 or above 60. It's always gonna be between the two strike prices. So if you ever come across a question where they're saying the break even is outside of the spread, there's no way that's the right answer. So maybe that's a way that you can eliminate some wrong answers there. And just so you know, for this question here, if this was a put spread, we would have counted down from the high strike price, put down. So our break even would be 54 if it was a put spread, just so you know, but it's not. It's a call spread, we have a break even of 56. That's how you get to maximum gain, maximum loss, break even. Um, this system will probably feel a little um, unfamiliar for the very first, let's say first, second, third, or fourth time you've, you've done it. But once you've done it about five, maybe 10 times, I, I bet you this is probably gonna become second nature for you. Um, so bottom line, what I would recommend you do is try to get this system down, do it a few times. If you need to write this out on your dump sheet when you take the exam, go for it. See if you can memorize the four-step system. And re remember, the most important part of it is knowing that this only works with spread, maximum gain, maximum loss, break even questions. Won't work with any other strategy. I do wanna cover more specifically what actually is happening with the spread. Um, because it's very, very common for people to see uh, test questions on the exam that involve more so than just maximum gain, maximum loss, break even. In fact, I, I fully expect you to probably see some context-based questions like, hey, what, what's the intent of this strategy or what, what's actually going on with this spread? And you know, obviously worded in a more intelligent way. Now, let's go through that. <clears throat> and I think the best way to look at this, I'm, I'm looking at the bottom right-hand side of my screen here. Um, the best way to look at this is to kind of break this up and to think about things in phase. Is. What I mean by that is, let's think about, well, wh what happens if the market price stays below 50? Remember the term call up, put down, right? Call up means that calls are only exercised if the market price goes up above the strike price. That's all that means, right? And it doesn't matter if you're long or short, same thing. Remember, remember it's only the buyer of the option that really exercises the option, so really that's the decision of the person that goes long a call. And if someone's long a call, they're only gonna exercise if the market price goes up. That's it. So here's what I'm trying to say. Below 50, both of these options are out the money, meaning they have no intrinsic value, and therefore will expire worthless. Okay, great. Now if that occurs, if, the op if both options expire worthless, the investor is stuck with their original net debit, which in our case here was six. 600 bucks, right? It's no mistake that, that that's our maximum loss. Now remember back to the very beginning, we called this a bull call spread, meaning that we want the market to go up. Does it make sense now? Like why we want the market to go up? If the market price stays below 50, we're stuck with our original debit, which is 600 bucks, and that's our maximum loss. We don't want that to happen. Now, once the market goes above 50, the long call goes in the money, meaning it starts gaining intrinsic value as the market goes up and starts making money for the investor. And just like any other long call, long calls have unlimited gain potential and will make money all the way into infinity, right? Now, it's no mistake that once we get to 56, the long call is $6 in the money, which means it's made them $600, right? Um, if the investor wanted to exercise their long call and buy stock at 50 and sell it in the market at 56, they could make six bucks per share or $600 overall, given that there's 100 shares involved, that would pay for the original net debit that they'd started out with, get them back to break even. So really what we're talking about here is, you know, once we get up to 56, we've broken even and anything above that, we're in gain territory. Now here's the problem. Once we go above 60, the short call goes in the money which I know that sounds good, but it's not. When you sell an option, you do not want that option to go in the money. So market price is going up above 60, the short call goes in the money, and therefore starts losing money from the investor as the market goes above 60. So once we get to above 60, both options are gonna start offsetting each other, and for every dollar that's gained on the long option, there's gonna be a dollar lost on the short option. Now with that being said, 
let's kind of look at the full picture here. This investor here is really betting that the market price is gonna go above 56. That's where their profitability is. The, the further it goes above 56, great, the more money they make. The only problem they run into is that above 60, gains on the long call start offsetting the short call. So here's the big point. Like, what's actually going on with this strategy? This is an investor that is bullish on ABC stock. They think it's gonna go up. But let's go back up to the top left. If you look at the long call, that's a $900 strategy. That's not cheap. Right? $900 to buy an option that might just expire if the market doesn't go up, that's a risk. They sold the call to put an additional $300 back into their pocket and therefore reducing the strategy from $900 down to 600. Now that's the good part about selling the call is it reduced the cost of everything from 900 down to 600. Right? This is a $600 strategy here. That's the good, but in finance, there's no free lunch, right? The short call gives you some money, but also puts a ceiling above the investor at 60. It caps their gains at 60. So that's really what's happening here. This is an investor who's, I'd say, slightly bullish on ABC stock. They think it's gonna go up, but also they probably didn't think it was gonna go much above 60 and therefore sold the call to put $300 back in their pocket. They are facing a little bit of what we call opportunity cost or opportunity risk because if the market price were to go up to, let's say, up to 100, 150, 200, they're missing out on all that upside gain potential because they sold the call. So just be aware of that. This is an investor that's bullish, but also wanted to use a short call to reduce the cost of the strategy. That's what's happening here. Now, there are a couple other parts to this uh, to this screen here that we'll go through. The first being the wide and narrow exercise expire. Now, most of you have, have read the material in Achievable and gone through this. We always wanna associate the terms widen and exercise with the term debit. While we don't need to know a lot about the, the term widen, if you think about it, like it was best if both these options get to the point where they exercise. Now, even though above 60, the short call starts offsetting the, the long calls gains, um, if we're thinking about the difference between both options exercising versus both options expiring, it's better for us to have both options exercising because that's when we're at our maximum gain of 400 bucks. If both options expire, we're with our maximum loss of 600. That's how you answer that. So you always wanna associate the terms debit with widen and exercise and credit with narrow and expire. It's just a word association thing for the most part. And in the materials, we talk about how credit, narrow, and expire all have six letters in each of them, and that's a way to remember it. Widen has five, debit has five, and exercise has seven. All the words that have six letters in them go together. The words that don't, also, they go together themselves. The last part of this would be what I call the above below question. And it would sound something like this. Above which dollar price does every dollar gained by the long option offset by a dollar lost on the short option? What they're really asking us here is where do both options start offsetting each other in terms of gains or losses? Well, if you're looking at the breakdown there, I mean, it should be pretty obvious. It's 60. Once the market price goes above 60, every dollar gained on the long option is offset by a dollar lost on the short option. Now, if you see this question, I'm gonna give you a really quick two-step shortcut to gain the answer. It's real simple. Number one, if you see that question, the answer is always gonna be one of the two strike prices. Always. Right? So that's right away, you can get rid of two of the wrong answers. It's gotta be one of the two strike prices, okay? Second step, if the question is above which price, it's the high strike price. If the question is below which price, it's the low strike price. And in case you're wondering, with calls, and call spreads, it's all, the question's always gonna be above. With put spreads, it would be below. We'll talk about put spreads in another video. Look out for that on the other part of, uh, of the, the achievable learning materials, it's there. Uh, but from there, that's how we go through a call spread. And hopefully this helps a little bit with your understanding. It's important to not only understand how to get to maximum gain, maximum loss, break even, but also we need to know how to name a spread, what's going on with the spread, Do we want the wide, narrow, exercise, expire thing, all that's important and all of those are very easily test questions that you could see on your exam.